Before we jump in, we've been getting a ton of comments with stock suggestions you want us to analyze and research, and we're going to be working through those over the next few days. Really appreciate all the input. Keep the suggestions coming. But today we're diving into QuantumScape, ticker QS, and they just dropped two major partnership announcements within eight days of each other, with Q3 earnings coming up in just three days on October 22nd. For those who haven't been following QuantumScape, they're developing solid-state battery technology that could revolutionize electric vehicles. We're talking higher energy density, faster charging, better safety, and longer life compared to traditional lithium-ion batteries. The challenge has always been manufacturing at scale, and that's exactly what these new partnerships are addressing. This could be a really important inflection point for the company. Quick heads up before we dive in, this isn't financial advice, just our analysis and opinion based on publicly available information. Always do your own research and talk to a professional if you're making investment decisions. Let's start with the first partnership because it's pretty significant. On September 30th, QuantumScape announced they're partnering with Corning Incorporated. Yeah, the same Corning that makes Gorilla Glass for your phone. But what most people don't realize is that Corning is one of the world's leading innovators in glass, ceramics, and material science with a 170-year track record. They've got world-class capabilities in ceramics manufacturing and that's exactly what QuantumScape needs. The partnership is focused on jointly developing ceramic separator manufacturing capabilities for QuantumScape's solid-state batteries uh, with a focus on high-volume production. The ceramic separator is basically the core technology that makes QuantumScape's batteries work. It's what replaces the liquid electrolyte in traditional lithium-ion batteries. Uh, manufacturing this at scale has been uh, the building dollar question, and now they've got uh, one of the best ceramics manufacturers in the world working on it with them. Then just eight days later on October 8th, they announced partnership number two with Murata Manufacturing. Murata is a leading manufacturer of ceramic components and electronic components, and they're coming in with the same goal, leveraging their strengths in ceramics technology to contribute to high-volume production of QuantumScape's solid-state batteries. So within the span of eight days, QuantumScape locked down two world-class ceramics manufacturers to help solve the manufacturing challenge. That's not a coincidence. This is clearly part of a deliberate strategy to build a manufacturing ecosystem around their technology. What's really interesting is that both Corning and Murata are established, profitable companies with decades of manufacturing expertise. They're not some startups. These are industry leaders who are committing resources to work with QuantumScape. That's validation of the technology from companies that know what they're doing. And the CEO, Dr. Siva Sivaram, said something really important in the Corning announcement. He talked about building the foundation for scalable production and furthering their mission to revolutionize energy storage. The key word there is scalable. QuantumScape can make their battery cells work in the lab. They've demonstrated that with their QSE5 cells. The question has always been whether they can make millions of these things economically. By bringing in partners like Corning and Murata who have deep manufacturing expertise and existing production infrastructure, they're de-risking that scale-up process. These partnerships let QuantumScape focus on the battery technology and cell design while leveraging partners' manufacturing capabilities. It's a smart strategy that a lot of tech companies use when they need to industrialize new technology. Now let's talk about the financial position because it's actually pretty solid for a pre-revenue company. QuantumScape has about $797 million in cash with very low debt. Their debt-to-equity ratio is only 8.7%. According to reporting from Electrek and others, they've got enough runway to continue solid-state battery development through 2029. That's critical because it means they're not under immediate pressure to commercialize or raise more capital. They can take the time to get the manufacturing right rather than rushing to market with a half-baked product. Yes, they're burning cash, trailing 12-month net loss, is $463 million, but that's expected for a company in this stage of development. They're still in R&D and piloting manufacturing, not selling products yet. The important thing is they've got the resources to get to commercialization. The earnings call on October 22nd is going to be absolutely critical. We're going to get updates on these Corning and Murata partnerships, what the timelines look like, what milestones they're targeting, how the work 
is structured. Uh, we'll also get updates on their QSE5 cell performance and testing manufacturing progress on the pilot line and hopefully some clarity on the commercialization timeline. And there's always the possibility they announce additional partnerships. Given that they just dropped two in eight days, who knows what else is in the pipeline? The pattern here suggests they're aggressively building out their partner ecosystem ahead of scaling production. You might see announcements of automotive OEM partnerships, additional equipment suppliers, or materials partners. What's interesting about the analyst community is they're mixed but trending more positive after these partnerships. Seeking Alpha actually upgraded their rating on October 10th, specifically citing the partnerships as reducing execution risk. Baird raised their price target from $6 to $11 back in July, but you've still got skeptics. Goldman Sachs has a sell rating. The mixed opinions make sense because this is still a high-risk, high-reward situation. QuantumScape is trying to commercialize a technology that nobody's done at scale before, but the partnerships with Corning and Murata show they're making real progress on the hardest part of the equation. The competitive landscape is worth mentioning because QuantumScape isn't the only company working on solid-state batteries. Toyota's got a program, Samsung SDI is working on it, Solid Power is a direct competitor. This is a race, and whoever gets to commercial production first with a product that works and can be manufactured economically wins massive market share in the EV battery space. That's why these manufacturing partnerships matter so much. They could be what gives QuantumScape the edge in that race. Corning and Murata bring decades of ceramics manufacturing knowledge that can accelerate the timeline significantly compared to QuantumScape trying to figure it all out on their own. Look, there's execution risk here. They still need to prove they can manufacture at scale. The timeline to commercialization is uncertain and competition is fierce. The stock's also incredibly volatile with a beta near five, so it moves way more than the market. But when you look at the pieces coming together, proven technology in the lab, $797 million in cash for runway through 2029, partnerships with world-class manufacturers like Corning and Murata, and analyst upgrades citing de-risking, there's a real case that QuantumScape is transitioning from pure R&D to actual industrialization. The next few days with Q3 earnings are going to tell us a lot about how real that transition is and what the timeline looks like. This isn't financial advice, obviously, and everything here is based on our analysis and publicly available information. You've got to do your own research and understand that this is a pre-revenue company trying to commercialize unproven at scale technology. But if you believe solid state batteries are the future of EVS and you think QuantumScape's partnerships position them to win that race, the next few weeks and months could be really interesting. Those Q3 numbers on October 22nd are going to set the tone for where this thing's headed. What stock should we analyze next? Drop your suggestions in the comments and we'll dive into another one. The more specific you are about why you're interested, the better. Whether it's a crazy news story you saw, a sector you're curious about, or just a ticker that's been moving and you want to understand why.